And we need to realize as Christians that love is a choice. The idea is that everyone has their understanding of what love is. And, you know, my love is conditional based on X, Y, and Z. Or if I don't feel it, then therefore I don't love you. So I need to go on to someone else that I feel the love with. And we need to realize as Christians that love is a choice. Every single day that you wake up, you choose to have a heart like God. You choose to say, I know X, Y, and Z happened yesterday, but I'm choosing to love. I'm choosing to show love because, as I mentioned before, not a lot of people know Christ. They might know, okay, you love the people that love you. And, you know, to, to get respect, you got to give it. So, like, I'm going to treat people the way they treat me type thing. But when they encounter us, they must encounter that agape love, that love that only God himself can impart within us so that we can give to others, right? So back to the command that God has given us. When Jesus was asked by the Pharisees, which of the commandments is the most important or would you say is the above all else? Jesus uh, responded to them saying that, you know, first we must love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul, everything that we are, all our being, right? So number one, we must love God with all our heart, right? The part that is sold out, the part that can be submissive, the part of us that there's all these other things that could have a throne or a pedestal within us, right? Within our hearts. But God is asking us, commanding us to love him with all of that. I know there's this idol. I know there's your phone. I know there's this boy or this girl or this other person or this other thing that you're so caught up with. But I'm asking you to choose to love me with all of that, with all of your heart. The other part is to love him with all our soul, right? So it's a physical, which is our heart, and the inward part, the uttermost part of our being, where no one else can touch, no one else can reach. On a spiritual level, he's asking us to love him. And then with all our minds, on a mental level, he's asking us to constantly, like, you know, sometimes things are not going to make sense and we're going to question God. And it is natural to have these questions when God is saying, turn away from that and still choose with your free will that I've given you, choose to love me. Now, after we choose to love God with all our hearts, all our soul, all our minds, everything that we are, he's also commanding us to love others the way that we love ourselves. So, okay, how can I love others if I don't love myself? You can't. You can't love others until you love yourself. And for you to truly love yourself, you have to understand the way that God loves you. God loves us with a love that never fails. He says that there's nothing, there is nothing that can separate us from his love, right? Not death, not life, nothing. Nothing can separate us from his love. Sin separates us from God physically and spiritually, but it doesn't separate us from his love. He still loves us. He's still crying out to us, repent, turn away from that. I still love you. I still want to be your Lord and your Savior and your Father, right? But you have to make that decision to turn away from that thing. So his love is unconditional on that level that no matter what we do, nothing can separate us from that love. If we know that, that God sees us as worthy of love, worthy of unconditional love, despite what we've done, despite what we're doing right now, and despite what we're going to do, um... There was this, um, I don't know exactly who said it, but it was like God factored in everything that we've done in the past, everything that we're doing right now, and the things that we're about to do when he decided to save us and to love us. So this very thing that you're 
like, oh my gosh, like, I can't forgive myself or I'm not worthy of God's love and all these things that we're beating up ourselves about. God is like, I knew you were going to do that. I tried to save you. I tried to stop you from it, but I knew you were going to do it anyways. But guess what? I still love you. You're still my child. I still care about you. I still have my arms wide open, ready to receive you, right? And we think about the prodigal son when he was like, you know what? Forget you, dad. Like, I just want my money and peace out. Like, just give me what's mine and I'm done, right? And he left. And then he realized, you know, after he spent all his money partying, whatever he was doing, living his best life, as we call it, he realized that he didn't have anything else left. And he was like, the servants in my father's house is living better than I'm living. Like, I'm eating the scraps that the pigs are eating. Like, what is this? So, um, he decided to go back home. He was like, father, forgive me. I was wrong. You know, forgive me. I just want to be your child again and the father threw the biggest party ever he was like my son is home rejoicing and excited right and that's how God loves us like my daughter's home yes she messed up and she did this and she did that but guess what I am rejoicing because she's back and she is you know still my child the enemy did not destroy her you know he tried but he didn't destroy her and when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior that's what we're committing ourselves to, to be loved, to be accepting of that love that God has given us and being ready to pour it out into others. So we have to realize that God loves us no matter what, right? And he has called us to love him no matter what, right? He's called us to love him with all that we are. And once we love God with all that we are, then we're capable, we're able to show love to others. I realized that I didn't really know what love was until I made that conscious decision that I need to have a heart like God. And I made the decision as well in my spiritual journey to understand God's love. And so there's times where I would have a conversation with him and I would say, but God, like, you know I did that, right? Like, you saw that. And he'll be like, yes, daughter, of course I saw that. But I still love you. And then I'll be like, but I said this, and I doubted you, and it turned away, and I, you know, said no multiple times. So what you called me to do, but I still love you, daughter. Like, I know all of these things, and I'm factoring all of these things in, but I still love you. And once I realized that there's absolutely nothing I can do that would turn God's heart away from me, I had to decide, wow, this love is so much bigger than me. It's so much bigger. And a God like that is a God that I want to love. It's a God that I want to be sold out for. It's a God that I want to live for. And because of that love that he has shown to me, and I continue to pour out to him, I learned more about how I should love others. Once I learned that, I had to look at others in a different light. I had to realize, like, yo, I just did the same thing. Like, I was talking about God about, behind his back. I was saying I don't believe in what God is saying right now. I was the one talking about him behind his back. And there's people that might do the same thing. Like, you know, we look at how Jesus suffered on the cross. He was persecuted for something he didn't even do. And there's times where I'm like, this person's talking about me and saying X, Y, and Z. That's not even true. Like, what? And it's like, we, we're ready to cut that person off. Like, ready. And God reminds me, like, but I forgave you when you persecuted me while I was on the cross. But I forgave you for a sin that you committed, right? I gave you that unconditional love in spite of love that even though you messed up, I was ready to take the fall for you. And <laughs> I'm like, that's what you want me to do? Um, God commands us in the different relationships that we might have that we need to show respect and we need to honor those people in our lives, right? And for a man, you know, who a husband, let's say, right? Um, he's supposed to love his wife the way Christ loved the church. 
How did Christ love the church? He laid down his life for her. That's what God is calling husbands to do. And for wives, he's calling wives to submit themselves to their husbands, right? Submission is not a curse word, but he's calling us to submit in the sense that we need to understand our role as wives. I'm not married, but there's different levels in how God show, calls us to show respect and love. What? Above all, he's called us to show that unconditional agape love. And the way we can do that is when we understand the way that God loves us, then we can show that love to others. We know that God loves us with an unconditional love that no matter what we do, uh, that can't turn us away from his love. His love is always there. It never changes. It never ceases. And it's unconditional. Once we understand that, we can say, wow, you love me that way? Wow, I'm worthy of that love? And we take it all in and we're like, yes, I'm worthy of that love. Like, I know I messed up and I know I keep messing up. But if I continue to connect myself to this God, this amazing, wonderful God that's all-knowing, all-powerful, all-forgiving, um, I can be able to accept his love. And then, because of that love that he's given to me, he's called me now to show that same love in return to someone that may do me wrong. To someone that, you know, may be talking about me or persecuting me, not in the physical sense, but maybe in an emotional sense, uh, cyberbullying, whatever the case may be, I need to be able to show that love to others. So in our lives, in our daily lives, we need to make that conscious decision every single day to put God first, to love him unconditionally with all of our being, right? And remembering the love that he is showing to us is the same love that we need to show to others. So I want you to take a moment in your life, whether it's sometime this week or even right now, to think about what it is that um, has hold, held you back from loving. We spoke about that last week. What is it that's holding you back from loving someone unconditionally? And I want you to Think about the unconditional love that God has shown you and the love that he's commanding you to show to someone else. Like, what is it that you're still holding on to that's preventing you from loving that person? And line it up with the love that God has shown to you so that you can release. And we might even ask ourselves, like, well, that person is not in my life anymore. The person might not, you know, be in the same vicinity, might not be alive anymore, what the case is. But you can still release. You can still find healing. Um, there's this, uh, I'm going to try to find the picture to insert it here, where it's like sometimes we hold on to a grudge so much that we don't realize that it's actually hurting us more than it's hurting the other person. So um, God has called us to just release and willingly and freely give the love that he has shown to us, right? I feel like there's a lot more that I want to say about this topic, but I know that a lot of us think of love as synonymous with forgiveness, which is what I'm going to go into in the next video. Um, I'm Christian, but I have trouble forgiving. And I know a lot of us have that, you know, um, thing that we're still working on. And I feel like this would tie into uh, forgiveness. So... Yeah, I think I'm going to end this video here so that I don't go into forgiveness. Definitely stay tuned for that part. Uh, if you give, if you like this video, once again, give it a thumbs up. Comment below anything that uh, resonated with you. Or I am going to continue to pray for you guys. Please continue to pray for me as well. Um, this journey that I'm on right now, this series that I'm doing, is definitely not an easy one. Um, there's times that I feel like, you know, I'm not qualified for this. But I know God, again, has called us. He's called me to do this. And he is equipping me with everything that I need to fulfill what he's called me to do. So thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for sharing it with someone, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, thank you for having conversations with people about God's word. Because even if they don't see my video, um, just 
the encounter that they have with you would definitely be able to help them build that relationship with Christ. And it starts with us. We need to be the ones that represent Christ wherever we go and be his heart, right? Um, there's a song, the other song that I was talking about by Casey J. Um, so your words, my mouth, your thoughts, my mind, your love, my heart, here's all of me. We're ready to give God every single part of us. Like, let him be in control. If you're ready for that, definitely continue with this journey. Uh, we're going to get more into God's word and we're definitely going to continue building and growing together. Thanks again for watching, friends. Be blessed, spread love, and stay beautiful inside and out. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.